Hello friends, Stacey Anfinson here with your market update for the RTP North Carolina residential market. Today's date is August 9th, 2023. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Is there any relief in sight for increased residential inventory, both new home and resale? Not a problem unique to our market, problem throughout the United States. So let's dig in and see what some of the data looks like. First graph we're going to look at comes from the St. Louis Fed. They get it from the Census Bureau. It's Wake County population. We're going to start at 2013 here on the left and go to 2022 on the right. You can see that if you subtract this number from this number, you should get a little over 200,000. Uh, that's a 21% increase compared to 2013. And if you've uh, been here a while, driven around, noticed a bunch of out-of-town license plates, you certainly can confirm that there's a lot more people here than there were back in 2013. So when people move here, they need shelter and they're either going to rent it or they're going to try and own it. And when they own it, you got two segments. You got new home and you have resale. The new home construction, uh, the new home market is really the primary uh, provider of inventory within this market. We're blessed to have a lot of new construction here. And before a house can get started, it needs a building permit. So one of the metrics that we track are building permits that are issued. And we go back from 2013 to 2022. During this period, 122,587 total permits were issued. So one of the metrics that is uh, analyzed on a national basis, it's called a building permits issued per 1,000 population. That kind of gives you an apples to apples comparison for all the different metropolitan statistical areas within the U.S. So how do we compare in Wake County? Well, in 2022, we're at 15. In 2021, we're at 15. Uh, so what do those numbers mean, right? It's a pretty abstract number. But the way I like to look at it is compare it to our peers and the United States. So uh, the United States average is 5.3, so a little bit 3x over that. And then Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is at 24. So if you think uh, we're building like crazy here, they're building more down there. So we stack up well nationally in terms of the new home market trying to add inventory. Now we're going to look at MLS and see what's going on with MLS. So this is annual listings added. Uh, first off, we go all the way back to 2013 again. I look at 2022 compared to 2021, uh, we're down 7%. Now we look at new resale listings added to the market, and now we're going to do it on a monthly average basis so we can get a feel for what's going on in 2023 and compare it on the per month average for the prior years. I only go back to 2019 on the slide because this was really the last full year before COVID hit in the first quarter of 2020. So we would kind of say this was a normal market. Uh, it went from 2078 per month down to 2056 in COVID. And then each month after that, it's gone down. So through the first seven months of this year, we're an average of 1,332 per month. So that is a significant decrease. It's down 36% compared to where we were in 2019 on a per month average. D transfers in Wake County uh, really is the best indicator of closed sales because it takes into account everything that is sold outside of MLS. And we go back to 2019 again, um, and you're going to see something a little counter to what you saw in the previous slide is that from 2019 to 2020 to 2021, we had a big increase. This is per month. This one, a little over 3,000 to about 3,400. This 3,400 was specifically due to lower interest rates that came out during 2020 and the first part of 2021 but as interest rates increase the third quarter of 2022 look at what happened on a per month basis it went from 3044 to 2876 to 2452 through the first seven months of this year the average through july is down 29 percent compared to the peak in 2021. Now, interest rate increases have not adversely influenced the months of housing supply. So here's our graph in January. The, the bottom during this year was 3.45% and up to 7% we are as of the recording of this. But yet, look at months of housing supply, uh, zero in January, February, March, and April, May, June, and July, all at one. So what's going on? What can we use listings and sales down, house price metrics up? What, what How can that be? You see in January, we started out at 488.1. 
And then we're at 568,609 in July. The July average is up 16% compared to the January 2023 average. That in a normal year, uh, dating back before COVID, we usually averaged around 3 to 4% per year. So we have about five uh, years worth of house price metric increases uh, during the first seven months of this year. And this is the stuff that we saw last year before interest rates went up. So that's a historic gain in terms of a seven month period. So uh, let's so you have house prices going up. So if you own a house, in theory, you should say, well, I, I've made a lot of money on this house. Let me go buy another house. Well, in our market, about 85 percent of houses are purchased with a mortgage, 15 percent plus or minus is the cash ratio. And so when you've got that large of a percentage of houses using mortgage, the mortgage rate's a big deal. Um, this graph shows you that 92 percent of American mortgages are below 6 percent, 82 percent are below 5, 62 percent are below 4, and 23 percent are below 3 percent. So that's a big deal. We're at 7 percent now. Uh, it's a tough sale to get those people out, and it gets even tougher when you look at it this way. What I did here on the left, uh, fourth quarter of 2021, I took the average sales price and the average 30 year fixed rate mortgage and I came up with a principal and interest and during that period it was $1,644 per month. Did the same thing for the second quarter of 2023, applying that current 7% rate and we're at 38.65. So there's not a lot of people who can swing a $2,200 per month increase in anything. Uh, and, and we always talk about housing affordability that's in the press a lot. And my response to that is house prices are affordable for those who can afford them. And so that's why houses sell and that's why you have house prices increase. But when you have uh, house price, uh, the number of listings go down, the number of closings go down, that's where you can see the adversity of the common, the current combination of house prices and mortgage rates. So to wrap up, just the facts regarding inventory trends. Uh, home builders are doing their share to provide inventory. The permit to population ratio in Wake County is above the national average, so thumbs up to them. Uh, as we noted, the majority of potential resale sellers have current mortgage rates below August of 2023 national average. Current level of house prices and mortgage rates are adverse due to inventory and close sale. They are adverse to inventory and close sale metrics. And then uh, this is not my term. This is a national term for the three D's of real estate. Death, default and divorce are the main sources of future resale inventory. I would always add an R on top of that, which is relocation inventory. The relocation inventory is down in our market uh, because corporate acceptance of work from home. So we just don't have as many people moving up out of here as they have done before. So that's all I've got for now. Uh, for further information, I ask you to visit www.tarreport.com. Uh, subscribe to this service. It's a phenomenal uh, resource for what's going on in this market. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we will see you again next time. Thank you for watching.